Hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is Milton Harris. Um, I serve as the youth and young adult pastor at the First Baptist Church of District Heights in District Heights, Maryland. And um, the problem that I want to solve uh, at our church that we're currently experiencing is the problem with uh, millennial, the millennials um, disengaging and, and actually um, departing from our church. Um, I have a solution based on um, conversations and, 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 and talks that I've had with many uh, millennials, being a millennial myself, knowing uh, some of the things that we like um, when it comes to church and our worship experience. Um, some things that I believe that our church isn't currently doing that if we started doing that, maybe we can engage and retain a lot of the millennials in our church. Um, I believe that this problem with the millennials leaving our church first, uh, I mean, the way the problem started was first and foremost, our pastor, who is also a millennial, um, start, when he took over our church uh, eight years ago, our church is 65 years old. We, uh, when he took over, it was about 40 members. Um, all over the age of 55. Um, so we, so all the programming, all the systems were catered to those over the age of 55. Um, when he came on, um, instantly it attracted younger people, um, younger families, um, the church grew, and instantly we became a, a multi-generational church, which has been great. Um, However, the problem is, though we've increased in size and um, we've added more young people and uh, younger generation and younger families to our church, um, we've still been operating under those same um, programming and, and, and systems that were geared towards um, the older generation. It's not saying that we shouldn't have things geared towards older, older, the older generation. However, um, I think that we should also uh, offer things that, um, that that speak to everyone in our church as well as we continue to grow as a multi-generational church. Um, when I was doing research for this paper, um, I did a, a small interview of the millennials in our church. And when I say millennials, I'm speaking to those people who were born between 1980 and 1996. Um, the millennials in our church make up about 35 to 40 percent of our church. So, I mean, that's a big chunk of our church that I think that, that feels that they're not being um, catered to. Um, so when I, what I did was I did a research, I did a, a, a small survey, and I surveyed about 20 millennials, those who were either disengaged from our church or actually left our church, just to find out some reasons why. And some of the main things that I heard was that our church uh, doesn't have a space for them to be able to grow spiritually that um, our church, even though they like the tradi traditional worship style on Sundays, they will also like something that is more geared to them in addition to the Sunday service. Um, 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 plenty of them also stated that, you know, our pastor is really the only young thing about our church and fresh thing about our church, which is the reason why many of them stay as long as they do, but then all, uh, eventually disengage because is they're looking for more of an inclusive um, type worship experience. Um, a lot of them stated that uh, they are looking to be involved in their spiritual development process um, as far as they would like to be uh, involved in the dialogue. They love the preaching aspect, but also um, if there were a way to be able to incorporate um, a, a, a way where it can be open dialogue where they are able to um, ask questions and engage in the worship experience, have free worship where they don't feel like they're tied to their seats or in their rows. They can go down to the front if they want, whatever the case may be. Um, they're looking for a more engaging relational environment, uh, which is something that many of them believe that we just don't offer now. Um, uh, so for me, what I propose is that we have an additional worship service, not necessarily our alternative worship service, but an additional worship service that will be so to me not to compete with our Sunday worship experience. Um, this worship experience will be held on a Saturday night evening. Um, and in this worship experience, even though it's for everyone, it will be mainly geared to the different types of uh, styles that millennials um, are more uh, attracted to, that they are more engaged uh, to. 
uh, uh, being a part of. And the first thing that I believe that we must do in order to uh, uh, successfully do this is, first and foremost, we must um, create a leadership team, a creative leadership team. And what, it, what I would propose is that we recruit leaders that are of the millennial generation for a couple of reasons. For one, they can bring all of their created, uh, creativity uh, to the table and they know what they, uh, you know, what they are looking for in a worship service. So we'll be able to meet their needs in that way, uh, getting the information straight from the horse's mouth. Um, another reason, uh, reason why I believe that I would want to uh, recruit millennials as the leadership is because it will also give them an opportunity to be in leadership, to be able to uh, uh, have leadership roles. That was another thing that they felt like they were always wanting uh, acts to serve, but never really got a chance to lead in our church. And I think that um, this would be an awesome opportunity to give them leadership responsibilities and also um, have it where they feel like they're actively involved in our church and in the church leadership. Um, and selecting these leaders, I would like to, uh, another way I would, what I would like to do is selecting them by obviously those with good character, high uh, integrity, uh, demonstrate leadership traits. Um, we will recruit uh, members uh, uh, that are current members and non-members who are highly qualified, who are looking to uh, engage and, and get connected to their local church. Um, when it comes to leadership development, we will use mainly the, uh, uh, we'll use a various, various uh, methods for leadership development, but mainly we'll use the book Building Leaders. And we'll surround our training and leadership development debate around the four competencies that they talk about in their book, which was being, knowing, doing, and feeling. And really what those uh, four competencies really address is uh, training leaders and developing leaders, first and foremost, character, building up their character, because without a uh, good character, it's hard to be an effective leader, that, or at least a leader that one is worth following. Uh, knowing, how do you process information? How do you be uh, able to retain and, and, and get information and apply it to what it is that you're actually trying to do? Doing act, the actual skill set, uh, giving our leaders the opportunity to actually lead. Um, I think um, the best way to actually learn something or actually to, uh, execute something is to get in the game. So giving them opportunity, that'll be a part of their training. And lastly, the heart. Why are you doing it? We will constantly challenge them on why is it that they want to be a part of this? Why is this important? Uh, because when you have the heart, when your heart is in it, um, everything else comes, your, your passion and your drive and your willingness to uh, 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 just be committed. Um, some of the training methods, you know, we will also seek out other mentors that are actually already doing what it is that we are trying to do. And we'll seek out those those people. We'll, uh, we'll also look into... Um, seeking out opportunities for them to be able to serve and, uh, um, and, and opportunities that will be able to, uh, in organizations where there are other, other millennials, where they'll be able to figure out uh, some uh, uh, other things that, that will be good for this service. For our budget, the budget for something like this um, will equal up to about $11,850. Um, I think when it comes down to evaluating our leadership process, we would try to use the performance factor and we would try to do a leadership evaluation at least uh, two times a year and every six months we'll have a dialogue, we'll um, have them fill out the performance factor survey, which comes from the performance factor book, which really will let us know how we're doing at, at, at building strong teams. Also, we'll, we, we will evaluate the leader by uh, ba uh, two times a year based on how efficient do they uh, complete the assigned task? Um, they'll be evaluated on their ability to recruit and train new leaders, uh, developing um, uh, other leaders. They will, their attendance and their service will be tracked and their overall energy um, uh, in, in the service and, and, and in what it is that we're trying to do. When I went to uh, assess our solutions, um, some of the pros, I think that this will give our millennials an opportunity to lead, which would engage them into our uh, uh, ministry even more. It would The solution will create future mentors, and the solution will uh, grow our church and millennial attendance overall. 
I think some of the cons could be that it will, uh, some of the remaining congregation would have some kickback. Uh, the solution can also, uh, as we see, it will require additional funding and approval from our budget. And it also pulls from uh, the staff uh, and re will require additional staff from an already strained volunteer pool. But I think that if, in, in, in summary, in closing, if we um, actually pour into this and I think uh, uh, in, in, in attempt to commit this uh, solution, uh, activate the solution, I think that it will change uh, the, the, the culture in our church. I think that we must respond. If we're going to call ourselves a multi-generational church, we should make sure that we're doing everything that we can to reach everyone that is in our uh, church, not just certain sets or certain groups.